Harold, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with me today. And thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're most welcome. For our audience, I'm going to uh, do a little introduction of you before we get into our questions. Harold D. Stolovich is Professor Emeritus at the University of Montreal, where he headed the Instructional and Performance Technology Graduate Programs and was the School of Educational Sciences Associate Dean of Research. He is also a former distinguished visiting scholar and clinical professor of human performance at work at the University of Southern California. Harold is a principal of HSA Learning and Performance Solutions, LLC. He is also a certified performance technologist and is a graduate of both McGill University in Canada and Indiana University in the United States, where he completed a doctorate and postdoctoral work in instructional systems technology. With one foot solidly grounded in the academic world and the other in the workplace, he has conducted a large number of research studies and practical projects, always aimed at achieving high learning and performance results. In addition to creating countless instructional materials for a broad range of work settings, Harold has authored more than 300 articles research reports, book chapters, and books. Harold is a past president of the International Society for Performance Improvement, ISBI, and a former editor of the Performance Improvement Journal. And he has been an editorial board member of several human resource and performance technology journals. He is an experienced workshop leader and keynote speaker at major conferences and organizations throughout the world. He and his wife and business partner, Erica J. Keeps, co-edited the first two editions of the ISPI Handbook of Human Performance Technology way back in 1992 and in 1998. And they co-authored the best-selling award-winning series of books, Telling Ain't Training, Training Ain't Performance, and Beyond Telling Ain't Training Fieldbook, and the Beyond Training Ain't Performance Fieldbook, all published by ASTD now ATD. As principal of the international consulting firm, Harold has worked with major organizations such as Bank of Montreal, General Motors, Hewlett Packard, Merrick, Sun Microsystems, and the U.S. government Department of Agriculture. Harold has won numerous awards for his contributions to the fields of instructional technology and performance technology, including the 2001 International Society for Performance Improvement Distinguished Professional Achievement Award, and also ISPI's highest award, Honorary Member for Life. He has also received the 2003 President's Award for Lifetime Achievements from the Canadian Society for Training and Development. And in 2004, Stolovich and his team won the ASTD Outstanding Research Award for their work on incentives, motivation, and workplace performance. Harold, as a start, can you give us your thoughts on the current state of the L&D profession? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, I always sound a little bit like a curmudgeon when the current state of anything is, because, you know, we always take, take a very critical view of things. And, you know, L&D has really been focused on uh, the underlying knowledge for the developing of systems to create effective models and tools and resources to improve learning and performance. And uh, the most trusted approach, I guess, has been instructional systems design, uh, which is an engineering approach to the development of learning systems. And it has a long history that extends, you know, even before World War II, and it it really coalesced uh, from three different major root sources, behavioral psych, um, general systems theory, and engineering methodologies, and, and then the other is the physical sciences with media development, and technological practice, and craft. Um, a lot of science and rigor and that rigorous analysis of disappeared evaluation methodologies, verification of results, um, and research and experimentation. 
So today, some science clings, but with insufficient rigor to do, due to the practical pressures. And that lost pragmatism has resulted in a loss that I believe uh, has weakened very much the practice of LMD. Well, let's face it, history shows us that there's always a huge time lag between research and practical application. So if we wander back into the 1960s and 70s, which in a way was the glory days, I think, of instructional design and the true blending of science and practice for uh, building learning and performance systems, Okay, and they really found there, they founded a, a scientific uh, foundation for both instructional systems technology and human performance technology. There was lots of data that was published and there were a lot of thought leaders, some of them whose names you may not know. Thomas Gilbert with his book on human competence, engineering worthy performance that came out in 1978 was a milestone. And people like Gary Rumbler, Gabe Ofeis, Joe Harless, Susan Markle, these are all revered names for us old folk, but which probably are less known today. So the first is the system, systematic analysis, those whole front-end analysis pieces that lead to the discovery of performance gaps and the way of translating them into clear, clearly articulated expectations. It's really funny. If people know exactly what they're supposed to do and they believe it and it's, it's explained to them well, my goodness, they perform better. Uh, support mechanisms for guiding people systematically on how to perform and providing them with sufficient tools and resources to carry out the work, rather than focusing on the structures and systems and tools that they need and the resources that are required and the mechanisms that are put in place to measure the results, we're, we're creating new tools, new technologies. We move from one to the next in rapid succession. And then the third, I would say, where we have failed to, to maintain and continue research has been in the feedback systems for informing everyone how they're performing in timely, specific, and meaningful ways that are consistent with either corrective or confirming feedback with respect to expectations. We have an impatience with rigorous data collection and analysis at the early front end and calls to action that basically have reduced thoughtful planning and preparation to jump ahead questionable actions and decisions. Let's get to closure. And that's what's happening with a lot of the work we do in LMD today. So the evolving fields of both learning and human performance improvement that intrigue me are the linkages particularly, linkages particularly between motivation and incentives and outcomes, either learning or performance. And my emphasis particularly is on performance out there in the world and how they're linked. So I'm gonna focus on that particularly because Again, when you're talking about all kinds of different method, you know, things that people do, there's a lot of mytholo mythologies, I'm sorry, that wander about. For example, there's a lot that, that people believe about incentives and incentive systems. There's sort of a, like an ideological confusion between incentives and bribery. Uh, Well-designed empirical studies with rigorous, well-selected, and, and targeted results have demonstrated the effectiveness of a, variety, of a variety of incentive interventions that focus on priority needs, priority outcomes, 
that get people to focus on what the organization needs to have done. And there are all kinds of incentive systems, not just, hey, I'll give you a few bucks if you do that. But there are individual, team, organizational, short-term and long-term incentive systems. Yes, there are monetary systems because people value, value monetary rewards. But there are also ones that are focused on intangible or combinations of others and uh, non-monetary incentives. So how learning systems link with performance improvement um, is a very sophisticated type of, of study. I'm just going to cite quickly and very self-servingly, you know, a major study we did uh, back in the, uh, er, in the early 2000s. And it focused on looking at both all the published research and data that could be found in the area of, um, of uh, incentive, incentive studies. And we did a meta-analytic review. We looked at globally at about 600 studies and focused in on, 20, on 45 that met rigorous criteria for that sort of like credible, credible type studies. And we also looked at over 400 incentive systems that were being applied in organizations from over 100 people to over 100,000 people. And the overall effect, I'm going to just give you a couple of data points. The overall average effect of all incentive programs in all work settings and on all work tasks was 22%. Uh, and team direct incentives, surprisingly for us, had a markedly superior effect on performance compared to individually directed outcomes. So it's not just one person being incentive, but teams. And although money was found to be to result in the highest performance gains rather than non-monetary ones, um, uh, that didn't mean that other systems did not have an effect. It's just that monetary ones were more easily identifiable. So what we found overall is that, uh, particularly when programs were initiated, we got like almost an immediate 15% gain in the early stages. And these continued to persist even when the incentive systems eventually were canceled. What I'm saying is, even though we are L&D people, basically, or we're instructional designers, we need to look at other things that affect performance and affect learning and not simply snob our way away from them, okay? Okay, like anything else, like any field, there are always myths that persist. Those are around everywhere, and these are things like left brain and right brain dominance and stuff like learning styles and so on. The world still focuses on learning as the major means for bringing about successful performance. Learning is one way to improve your performance, but that's only if there's a skill and knowledge deficit. If the motivation isn't there, if it's a culture that's against what you do, if the incentive systems are wrong, learning won't help. And, you know, they can be as simple things as providing people with the right resources or putting people together in different combinations so they learn from each other and they improve based on feedback from each other. Um, and technology is one of the big myths in learning that we believe will somehow get us to you know the ideal state and that technology only amplifies things it makes them faster and it helps us to show the real world and it improves efficiencies but it doesn't necessarily improve the effectiveness or application of learning